Okay, so camera rolling, and here I am. Good evening, everyone. I'm Ignaz Solovey, photographer, cameraman, uh, print designer, interpreter, translator, and uh, Volans Nolans, even a sound guy, somehow. So today, uh, despite of what uh, you could uh, read uh, on uh, the AMC website, I'll tell mostly about sound. So that's why these microphones uh, here on the uh, a slide. Uh, so uh, I'll tell how to get decent sound cheaply and simply. Uh, so uh, with your smartphone, with your basic computer, uh, and with uh, a wallet even thicker than that. So first, oops, yeah, that clicks. First, this is a non-endorsement presentation. So, as you can read, none of, uh, none of gear manufacturing or retail companies mentioned during this workshop provided any payment uh, or any gear for the purpose of its promotion. Uh, so, the workshop itself is free, uh, but uh, I'll be thankful if you throw some, something uh, into my hat later. Well, no hat, but still. Uh, so, as well, I won't talk about physics too much. So I'm not a physicist, I'm a journalist and cameraman. So uh, if from a journalist standpoint I'm a techie, from phys uh, from physical standpoint I'm not. So uh, I'll keep physics uh, as little as possible. And also I won't venture into history too much. So this muse called Clio uh, isn't uh, an invited guest here. Of course, I'd like to thank American Center and Matthew Underwood in person uh, who offered this uh, venue and allowed so much stuff being brought uh, through security that tight. Okay, uh, so microphones. Microphone, as you know, is a device that allows you to capture sound. There are numerous kinds of microphones, uh, numerous acoustic schemes, electric schemes, uh, and uh, of course uh, they look different. So here I do not uh, separate them as uh, uh, like by condenser or dynamic or electric or ribbon or whatever. Uh, anyway, I'll explain. Yeah, my non I see your eyes. Uh, so anyway, I'll explain uh, that later. And this presentation will be. Uh, uh, available online later as well as hopefully the recording of my face and my voice. Uh, so there are various kinds of microphones, a lot of them are here in the flesh and even more here on the screen. So first of, one, uh, first of all, uh, the, mi the microphone, the kind of microphone that is clipped onto me, it's a lapel or lavalier mi microphone wireless in my case. Uh, so here's Chinese, not a ripoff, just but regional Chinese development. It's a wireless system. Uh, here on the slide it's uh, Sennheiser, which is clipped on me. So a transmitter is clipped or hanged uh, or touched on someone or something. And the receiver uh, receives a signal and records it to camera, to recorder, to computer anywhere. Next one uh, is probably the most familiar kind of microphone, familiar for general public is a vocal dynamic microphone. This one is wired, uh, nothing actually is working here. So this is like wireless dynamic microphone, sure, like a synonym for uh, a vocal microphone at least stage microphone. I, I don't use it uh, right now because it's, uh, it echoes uh, from the speaker to my lavalier microphone. And uh, anyway, I hope you, everyone hear me pretty well. Uh, so, and uh, this is uh, Shure 55, uh, that retro looking microphone, Elvis Press, the microphone, whatever. Anyway, uh, the main purpose of vocal microphone is to help you to record voice, singing, speech, whatever. Anything 
actually they can record anything but uh, they are most suitable for recording human voice. So uh, historically uh, it was carbon microphone and then ribbon microphone uh, that were used in broadcasting since uh, I don't know how much uh, how many hackpackers we hear uh, how many journalists uh, in my uh, tiny audience here. Uh, so, uh, actually, ribbon microphone is the most evident of all. It's a small, thin ribbon uh, inside that fluctuates uh, from voice. Uh, dynamic vocal microphone, uh, or actually it's a narration microphone, sure, SM7. Uh, from my point of view, it's like uh, standard for radio broadcasting. And condenser microphones for, mm, well, the same purpose. Here it's one uh, condenser microphone that I'll talk about later. Uh, then uh, directional or shotgun microphones, don't call them shotgun in the presence of Marines uh, or police. So I had uh, like small situation when uh, when being asked by subway security what do you carry I said uh, uh, shotgun well a shotgun so it's a microphone how oh, yeah okay so uh, shotgun directional microphones uh, they are designed uh, to pick up sound from more or less remote position and to record it clearly and not to record anything that comes from sides. That's directional microphones. Uh, this one is, as most other here, are, is Chinese and uh, uh, it's not only directional, uh, but uh, later on that. So reporter microphones, uh, uh, reporter microphone is like just a microphone you stick between your, yourself and uh, your interviewee or person you talk with, or you can just put it between you and uh, it will pick up both voices. Or, for example, uh, if I'd like to record uh, a meeting in a classroom there uh, and uh, without dedicated conference boundary microphone, uh, I choose this reporter microphone to put in, a, in more or less in the center of the room and uh, uh, get uh, voices at least uh, more or less distinguishable. Then uh, XY stereo microphone, uh, like uh, it's uh, here I have it uh, as part of voice recorder, later on that as well. Uh, and. Uh, it's it designed uh, to record two audio channels, stereo signal, in uh, with a compact device. Uh, actually, uh, it uh, originates uh, in uh, uh, it originates in a microphone position uh, scheme, like you set two microphones X, Y. So that's why it's called uh, XY scene. A gooseneck and boundary lavalier microphones you can uh, encounter at uh, conference halls and uh, other like business venues. Uh, so basically, a gooseneck is uh, just uh, another kind of whatever other microphone. They uh, they can be dynamic, they can be electric, they can be condenser, uh, whatever. And boundary layer microphone is designed to be placed on some flat surface, and uh, it picks up sound that comes from sideways and does not pick up uh, so, uh, doesn't pick up anything that uh, isn't happening underneath it. So if uh, someone uh, does a tap dance sitting at a conference, uh, this microphone won't hear that. And also there are numerous kinds of various, uh, various microphones. Uh, they are listed in a small font deliberately uh, here. So telephone instrumental microphones designed specifically for uh, musical instruments. Uh, 
uh, for various musical instruments and uh, measurement microphones uh, to measure acoustic properties uh, of uh, uh, rooms, of uh, speakers, whatever. Uh, laryngophones, uh, microphones clipped uh, onto neck, they pick up actual vibrations. Uh, they are used mostly by divers uh, and sometimes pilots as well as well and by like uh, biohazard in biohazard areas uh, whatever pilot headsets ATC YP microphones uh, surveillance microphones like bugs uh, hydrophones uh, to pick up sound underwater and uh, more and more and more and more uh, so uh, different microphones uh, pick up sound differently, so uh, here it's uh, what's called microphone polar patterns. Uh, not all of them are listed here. In Russian it's, uh, it sounds like uh, directions diagram, diagram of uh, So actually these images are uh, flat 2D reproductions of uh, how microphones pick up sound. So omnidirectional microphone, this one's reporter, omnidirectional microphone, it picks uh, sound uh, from a sphere, from a sphere around it. So like you put this microphone inside the globe and so it picks up the sound from the globe. Then uh, bidirectional or figure eight ribbon microphones uh, historically are designed like that. This thing can also be uh, bidirectional so it picks up sound uh, from one side and from the other side. But uh, of course, it uh, hears uh, what happens on top or uh, other sides, but uh, much worse than uh, from front or ear. Cardioid microphone. Cardioid, it's like a heart shape. A lot of microphones, actually the majority of microphones you'll encounter, you'll encounter have cardioid polar pattern like this. So. Uh, this design is good for handheld microphones, uh, so that, uh, especially if a handle is designed more or less good. Uh, so uh, right now it's switched on. Uh, so this microphone uh, hears what's said mostly directly into it, but uh, also it hears uh, sound from sideways, but not that good. Uh, then uh, hypercardioid, supercardioid, and ultra-directional microphones. Uh, they actually uh, aren't too uh, hyper and supercardioid. They are actually they actually not too different from each other, uh, not noticeably, at least for our purpose. Oh, by the way, uh, a lot of lapel microphones are also omnidirectional, but there are lapel microphones that uh, pick up sound. Uh, that they, that have a cardioid or uh, shotgun diagram. Uh, so uh, it's all about how, from which direction, microphone microphone picks sound. So uh, for shotguns, uh, this diagram is not exactly correct, at least for this one, uh, because uh, actually proper ultra-directional microphone hears only what's directly in front of it. So it doesn't exactly hear what's, what happens sideways uh, and uh, even like here. So this microphone has switchable polar patterns. One is cardioid and uh, one is, it's called tele here, but well, it's Chinese. Uh, and uh, actually the, uh, very, one very important thing for directional microphones is this. Uh, it's uh, like a resonance uh, chamber. Uh, so a hypercardioid microphone is placed somewhere here in the beginning. And this uh, cuts, these cuts here, uh, are, they are designed more or less purposefully and specifically. So the longer the thing is, uh, the more cuts, generally, uh, uh, the lower frequencies uh, will be picked up from sites. For example, a directional microphone uh, for cinematography, uh, quite long one, like half a meter, almost two feet, 
Uh, so, oops. Uh, uh, so those microphones, they pick up sound from several meters and don't hear anything around themselves except source. Uh, also like hunter's microphones, bird, watch, bird uh, watchers uh, and surveillance microphones that uh, the ones you see in spy movies, like a uh, microphone pointing at some distant window, uh, open window and uh, picking up the tiniest whispers. So that's, uh, uh, those are ultra-directional microphones. There are other polar patterns, but these six, uh, they are uh, uh, the most widespread. Okay, so uh, now to the fun part. This, if you're outdoors, if you're outdoors, this is your enemy number one, wind. That's why. That's why. I have some stuff that has weird names among. So, sponge, no, the pop filter, dead mouse, dead cat, and blimp or zeppelin. If anyone, I, I think at least two persons here know what I'm talking about, and those who don't, so here they are. So no one, no one actually uh, uh, calls uh, wind shield, foam windshield a clown nose. But actually, if uh, you lost your windshield at a round circus and uh, you can uh, like uh, rob uh, some clown of his nose and uh, use uh, that sponge, that piece of foam as your primary, the most basic kind of windshield. Of course, these reporter microphones, they are good uh, uh, because they are less susceptible to, to any kind of wind. So here uh, the grill is on, on top only and uh, uh, the foam in front is also a bit denser than side from sides. Uh, so actually you can use a clown's nose uh, to protect uh, your sound from tiny from some small wind and from plosive sounds like pee, pop stuff. So this number B, it's a pop filter. Uh, it's a pop filter. On this microphone, I have a second kind of that. Cham Everything's Chinese. Everything's made in China. We, uh, there was even a musical band named like that. Uh, so they are designed to prevent plosives from disturbing microphone membrane and to prevent saliva and whatever else uh, coming out of your mouth or nose, uh, mouth or nose uh, from getting onto microphone, onto membrane. And uh, yes, it's a bit more hygienic. Uh, so they come, uh, they come in various sh uh, sh uh, sizes and shapes, so these three are mostly uh, the most widespread. So uh, the one on the left is the most popular. It's just attached in front of any microphone from a short distance. And uh, it serves uh, another purpose as well. Uh, it doesn't allow you to get too close to microphone so that you won't, like, uh, don't overload it. So now to strange, to dead animals and uh, aerial vessels. Can I ask a question? Huh? Does this one have both the pop filter and the clown nose? Uh, this has, uh, yes, a foam windscreen, the basic foam windscreen, and uh, uh, a pop shield. Uh, so, uh, uh, pop shields uh, are usually used in studio conditions uh, because uh, they won't m make much use uh, outdoors. They don't, pr uh, they don't exactly pretend protect you from natural wind uh, because natural wind comes from any direction. So, now to dead animals. Actually, these are small pieces of artificial fur only artificial and uh, nothing with uh, nothing about pet rights or animal rights, 
uh, because uh, natural fur is uh, like leather based and leather is uh, thick uh, and it doesn't allow any sound or wind for that matter but uh, more or less mostly sound uh, to get to microphone's membrane. So artificial fur maybe with some foam inside so this one is like factory made and this one is handmade, uh, custom, custom made, handmade. Uh, so dead mice, uh, initially everything was called dead cat for size resemblance, but uh, with uh, lavalier, lipo microphones, uh, so you don't fight even kittens that small. So if you want to record an interview uh, hands-free, like walking with your subject interviewee, uh, in windy conditions, uh, that doesn't exactly look good on camera because uh, unless it's winter uh, or uh, you film some, some pop star who doesn't want to part uh, with her first. Uh, so it looks like this. Uh, this um, is not actually engaged. I have another one. Uh, so it protects, win uh, it protects wind from entering microphone membrane itself. Why fur? Uh, because a lot of hair, a lot of hair, and uh, wind is trapped. The wind is trapped into the hair. So like imagine someone wearing an afro and a baldy like me. So that's the difference. Uh, I feel all the wind and uh, the guy with the afro or with dreadlocks, he won't. Uh, dreadlo dreadlocks, well, they're better in terms of protection from elements, but uh, not good in terms of uh, sound. Okay, so that cat, uh, this, uh, this kind of uh, windscreen uh, uh, is mostly used on shotgun microphones because uh, this uh, kind of acoustic uh, contraption. So there are slits, little slits here, and wind comes inside and uh, creates small turbulences or blows uh, from inside out or from outside inwards, and it creates a lot of uh, disturbance and distraction. So uh, actually it's not advised to use uh, fur only, although with some kind of microphones uh, for resolves all issues. So first we wear this uh, form, basic protection, and then uh, get our dead cat onto our shotgun. And that's inside a spider. So uh, these kind of shock mounts, uh, they are called spiders for obvious resemblance, mostly studio, but this one as well. Uh, so, fur uh, uh, actually prevents uh, almost all wind, uh, not really strong, uh, up to maybe 20-25 meters per second from my practice. The enter a shotgun microphone. And uh, since uh, the foam is thicker in front, and uh, also the fur is a bit thicker in front on properly made uh, dead cat, uh, so you actually uh, use, you can use this microphone like this. So imagine someone like an interviewer, a uh, reporter standing and uh, or an assistant uh, standing and holding that microphone rod. Uh, uh, so this microphone rods they are used in a lot on cinema production uh, held like this or like this from below. The whole idea behind it is uh, uh, so that microphone uh, would be exactly in, uh, at a place it's need, uh, it needs to be and not in a frame. Uh, so if uh, you see a person uh, in front of a camera not wearing 
any kind of lapel microphones. It means that either it, uh, either that person uh, wears a concealed lapel microphone. Almost, I tried to conceal this one, but it's not my original purpose. I can like hang it here, or uh, it's a shotgun directed uh, onto that person. So uh, for me, as I often film at airfields, and uh, a good uh, day for flight should be slightly windy. Uh, so for me, uh, recording uh, interviewing pilots and uh, aircraft technicians and uh, whoever else at, the air, uh, at any airfield, for me, uh, directional shotgun with a uh, fur windscreen is a very, very nice solution. Actually, it works like for any outdoors interview. Of course, uh, if uh, a microphone uh, being uh, inside a shot, uh, if a microphone being inside a shot is not critical, I can uh, uh, make person speak directly into my uh, into microphone, or if a microphone is essential in a picture, uh, for example, a microphone testing uh, or recording some uh, opera diva or whoever. Uh, if a microphone is essential, but still I have to do it uh, outdoors, I can just uh, stuff uh, any other microphone into that cat and that uh, will reduce all the parasite sounds greatly. Uh, so these uh, microphones, they uh, aren't designed uh, for uh, windy conditions, but still, still uh, there is quite decent wind protection here. Uh, so despite I prefer uh, these vocal microphones to be used with basic foam windshields, it still has foam inside uh, under the grill and uh, it's quite good. And finally, blimp. Uh, so uh, how do you kill off an excessive wind with a sound uh, or with, uh, with air, of course, sorry. So, the best way to kill an excess wind, an excess of air, it's air, not air. So, uh, basically, basically, a blimp uh, is a thing where a shotgun microphone is placed inside, and uh, it's like an external shell. It's an external shell that uh, first prevents. Uh, uh, air from outside, from entering uh, the microphone compartment too fast. So if uh, an air is slowed down, it doesn't produce that much noise. So like, like a really, really, really basic explanation. Uh, another enemy, number two, is a background noise. In Russian, it's called intranoise, intershum. So background noise. Actually, I like my sound clear. So as much a voice or whatever sound I need possible clearly and as little background noise as possible. Yet, subdued enemy is almost a friend. Don't always eliminate it completely. Why? If you're recording an interview outdoors, for example, at a football field, uh, at a busy street like uh, garden ring in the evening, uh, or Novarbat or whatever, uh, or even at an air show or an airfield, you need presence. Why? I'll, a bit later uh, on that. Uh, you need a uh, sense of presence. It's not a huge task to record really, uh, really clear sound uh, in noisy conditions. Anyway, if you desperately need to record clear voice at a football field uh, during like a World Cup final, you can just uh, keep microphone closer uh, to your mouth and uh, adjust levels accordingly again on that later. Uh, but to record sound naturally for cinematic purposes, it is a task, a huge task. Uh, so, uh, and actually a cinematic sound engineer, 
uh, or sound uh, sound designer maybe uh, it's a separate occupation which requires uh, full-blown five-year higher education so anyway uh, I'm talking about uh, journalist causes and purposes uh, so we need background noise but we just don't need a lot of it uh, so again again windshields help with that as well but what helps more is uh, levels adjustment so microphone hears you better when you are close to it I demonstrated it to some people here before uh, I started the lecture so again uh, listen to speakers behind me so actually uh, microphone hears me all right and uh, with uh, some adjustments uh, at a mixing console I can uh, pull sound out of it uh, but also this microphone hears a lot of uh, uh, other small talks uh, and uh, air conditioning and whatever happens in this venue uh, but if I talk directly into a microphone it hears me perfectly well and speakers hear me perfectly well too uh, so you can adjust your levels so that a microphone will hear you, only you, nothing and no one but you, or something besides. So the further are the sounds, the quieter they are for any kind of microphone, even for directional, uh, for uh, ultra-directional shotgun. Although there are kind of uh, there are kind of sounds that makes uh, any sound recording almost impossible, drilling, walls, uh, hungry or wet babies, and police or ambulance sirens that can kill off any sound recording, even in some ability. So live with that. Wait. And by the way. Of course, it's better to keep this mic or shell than this mic. Don't chew it, actually. Uh, and watch your levels. Later about levels. Uh, but first about enemy number three. It's, as you may guess, another uh, character from Greek myth mythology. It's an echo. So here is like a uh, boy talking into in front of a brick wall and brick wall perfectly reflects not perfectly but still it reflects what's said and it creates an echo, echo. Uh, if we need an echo for whatever purpose like uh, our characters mess in some hangar or in some uh, brick uh, building or a factory whatever if we need an echo, okay, we need it. So we record everything with an echo. But what if we don't need an echo? There are a lot of stuff designed for cancelling parasite sounds and sound reflections. So this place where we're at is more or less soundproof. It has carpet on the floor and uh, uh, fox sailing above uh, of a uh, clay form, whatever. And uh, the walls here aren't exactly brick, they are covered. But still, it's not an anechoic chamber, it's not a studio. So if I would like to record some like chamber music here, or not exactly chamber, for example, like 10, 20 musicians uh, fit here perfectly, I guess, like some string orchestra, I need it soundproof. So, form, again, form is our friend. Because, uh, because of its structure, sound enters and it gets lost in a maze of form pores. Uh, so if you want to design a studio, you design, you may want to, you may would like to design it like this. It's a professional and echo chamber. Uh, I can't tell you where I photographed it. Uh, and uh, it's actually not a sound recording studio. It's uh, for 
uh, testing purposes, uh, like uh, it's electromagnetically neutral, it's for different. But as well, uh, there is almost, physically, absolutely, it's almost no echo inside that room. Uh, the shape of that panels may be different, pyramids, uh, waves, or whatever, that depends on specific purpose, uh, or maybe on your taste. Because for voice and instrument recording, uh, it's not that really critical. Okay, audio files uh, uh, and uh, other insane people may tell you whatever they would like, but just any, almost any form, except maybe even rock wool, uh, fireproof insulation. It's not a form exactly, but it may work as well. Because soft material, spongy material with a lot of small, little tiny cavities inside, it's divorce sound, it kills it off. Okay, what was that? No problem. So, but an echo chamber costs small fortune, or not so small, depends. Uh, and uh, also soundproofing uh, any office or an apartment, a rental apartment especially, is uh, maybe, first it's not that costly of course as professional and acoustic chamber, but uh, still it may cost something like several hundred or maybe several thousand dollars depending on your taste and uh, uh, what do you want to get uh, or how much do you want to spend. Uh, anyway, uh, there is cheap form, not so cheap form, and uh, freaking expensive form, like anything. Uh, so, you, uh, your landlord, if you rent an apartment, wouldn't like you to ruin his or her precious walls with some ugly looking gray or blue or pink form. So, enter acoustic screen. I brought one here. So it's just an acoustic form shaped as a semi-cylindrical, uh, well actually it's a small tube. It costs uh, like $25 on, on uh, Amazon. I hear I bought it a bit more expensive. So if you want to make a nice vocal booth, as it's called as well, if you want to make a nice vocal booth in even in your kitchen, in your dorm room, if you're a student, uh, this, this thing solves your problem. It costs from 25 to 400 dollars and uh, what costs 400, like the thing on the right, is not necessarily better than this cheapskate stuff made of, I don't know where this piece of foam it's made maybe in Russia, maybe in China, maybe even in Germany, but still it's cheap and then pretty efficient. And uh, efficiency is what I'm about at this lecture zone. So, uh, why uh, I mounted this uh, piece of foam here? Uh, first, of course, uh, this microphone, is uh, its purpose is studio recording in quiet conditions and um, actually conditions a bit quieter than the guys near Max create right now. Uh, okay, guys up there, please be a bit quieter. Yes, thanks. Uh, so, if you want to prevent any parasite sound entering your microphone from any direction except the one you want, you use a piece of foam, not a cardboard, not a brick, or at least formed, uh, covered with foam. Uh, that may as well be like a folded tablecloth or whatever. Just your, uh, see, uh, just your coat or Macintosh, whatever, uh, fold it. J uh, the main purpose is echo cancellation at a short distances. So if I speak directly into this 
microphone like this. So my voice hits not random space out there, and but it hits this form screen. And this form screen divorces that sound waves, and not allowing them to go sideways and uh, any way they would like to and uh, return back as an echo. Uh, so this way I create my small, tiny, portable anechoic echo chamber. I keep close to my microphone uh, and the microphone is kept close to this soundproof, so soundproof wall and that's solve, that solves the matter. So actually I can with this, I can come to the most echoing cave or airfield hangar or huge classroom or a train station, whatever, anywhere, wherever. I can come there, set up my laptop or voice recorder, set up stuff like this. Uh, actually, uh, this piece of metal and springs, uh, it's table mounted uh, microphone stand, there are of course uh, more conventional floor mounted. Uh, come there to very, very acoustically unfriendly space, set it up there and create acoustically friendly space. But that is for studio recording. Uh, for field recording, artificial fur is our best friend. Now, Back to levels. Hipsters love VU meters. Actually, this one uh, here is a t-shirt with a vintage looking uh, analog VU meter. Uh, but there's more than that. So I picked up these four images, not just randomly. Uh, this is an analog VU meter. Yeah, it looks cool, but uh, it shows you precisely where is your signal? Uh, its disadvantage is that uh, it doesn't uh, rest in one position. It, it can jump and then it instantly returns back. Uh, and uh, you have to pay much more attention than to LED. This kind of V meter is actually, uh, uh, it doesn't serve any professional purpose. It's like another hipster thing, uh, demo. Uh, toy to stand uh, on a shelf. I picked it f uh, because of its color scheme. It's, it resembles a traffic light. Green, it's fine or even finer than we need. Yellow is take care and red is no go. And this, uh, it's a screenshot from some software. I don't remember which. It's uh, all images are Googled more or less. I uh, didn't observe copyrights because it's a small event. Uh, anyway, it's, some, uh, it's from soft, some software and I picked this specific image because of its uh, color scheme. Oops, yes. So here it's a bit larger. Uh, and digits here are more visible. So decibels, uh, uh, of course there is bell after Alexander Graham Bell, but with one L. Uh, the inventor of a telephone has two L's, had two L's. Uh, so, uh, decibels are logarithmic units. And uh, so, you know about like uh, airplane or um, uh, vacuum cleaner noise um, is measured in uh, decibels sound SPL, sound pressure level. Uh, and uh, these are positive numbers. Uh, here, in uh, audio equipment, uh, there are negative decibels. Well, zero here is not uh, like nothing. It's not like zero in this case, but uh, like some starting point or an end point. So uh, I actually, I, th I think I invented this visualization, uh, visualization uh, last night when I compiled this presentation. So uh, the golden middle is between minus 18 and minus 6 with almost all kind of gear, be it cameras, voice recorders, or voice recording apps in your smartphones. 
or tablets, whatever. So here the golden middle is not exactly golden, it's yellow. Uh, then the so-called uh, attention zone, I would call it like that, attention zone is uh, here between 6 and minus 3. And uh, of course you can go upwards to 0 and even over it, but as with the speed limit there is some leeway, you have to have some leeway. So I uh, decided to design my badges or stickers or signs like a road signs. So it's recommended that you keep in the range of minus 12, in the middle of the middle. And uh, obey this limit of minus 3 decibels on your gauge. And like airplanes have never, uh, ne have never exceed speed uh, after uh, surpassing which they just break apart in the air. So never exceed zero because you'll have your sound distorted like uh, uh, this, uh, even worse than this, uh, because here uh, the sound is more or less uh, uh, set up. But uh, you'll have your uh, sound levels clipped, all that cracking noise, uh, and, uh, and you won't, sell, won't be able to salvage that in many cases, not all cases, but many of them. So what's next? So view meters, actually they are the representation, one of the representations of a sound. But sound has a look, of course. It's waveform. It's particularly this. This is what, you, uh, what you'll see in audio editors. So this one in the middle where I point with this green laser, uh, it's a stereo waveform where upper part uh, displays left channel and lower part displays right channel. Uh, as well, it's uh, maybe one channel as well. Uh, this one is like it's zoomed in a lot. And these are, uh, it's actually a design image, a clip art stock image, uh, not an actual screenshot from any software, but uh, looks uh, good enough for our purpose. And so uh, this uh, is another kind of gauche. It displays the levels of a sound of uh, specific frequencies. So uh, on frequencies, uh, as you may know, maybe remember from school biology or physics that human sound perception is from 20 hertz to 20 kilohertz, from 20 to 20,000. That's an ideal situation. Of course, uh, there are uh, people who can perceive sound maybe even higher than 20 kilohertz, but mostly human speech is uh, between, well, 150 to maybe uh, very high voices, maybe one kilohertz. That's exceptional, it's like falsetto or uh, whatever. So human speech is uh, in the range about several hundred hertz. Uh, it's called the middle. So that's human voice range. Uh, the bad thing about that is that uh, the most, uh, the majority of noises that happen, they fall into that range as well. So lower frequencies, humming, uh, like maybe distant rumble, thunder, it's like maybe 40, 50, 60, 80 hertz. And uh, high frequencies, uh, so here uh, it's like mosquitoes flying. So Hertz is uh, vibrations per second, uh, called after German physicist, uh, Gunnar Hertz. Uh, and this, I guess, it's from another software or software plugin. This, as for me, it's an ideal representation of sound. It's like that huge mountains colored mountains with steep hills and valleys. Uh, so each of these lines shows specific frequency. How tall is this line is how, it's, uh, how loud is the sound of that frequency. And uh, the middle here, uh, it's a separation of right and left channel. Why right and left? Because, uh, and why I'm talking mono and stereo only, because uh, monaural sound is uh, like a technical history and stereo sound is stereo because people have two ears 
not 2.1 years, not 5.1 years, not 9.1 years, or other things, Dolby Laboratories and uh, cinema, uh, home cinema makers uh, or uh, movie uh, theaters want to sell you. So we have two ears, left and right. Uh, maybe someone have third, you know. Uh, so we have two ears and so two channels. You don't need surround sound when you are in the news, whatever. Maybe sometime you'll need, but anyway, we have two ears and uh, what is necessary and enough is two channels, stereo. Uh, so this represents some kind of sound. Of course, it's fancy looking, it's funny, it has some kind of physics and mysteries, so uh, joke time, it was hipsterized, yes. Uh, actually, uh, you, there are some, like maybe one or two startups that can, can print out a waveform of your favorite song so that you hang it on the wall. Uh, these ones uh, sold on eBay, like you send uh, on eBay or in AliExpress in China. So, like you send the seller a uh, sample of your voice, like uh, this waveform actually says your voice. Uh, you send them a sample of your voice and uh, then they produce uh, some kind of uh, uh, jewelry uh, from that. So uh, this is a 3D printed uh, visual representation of sound uh, and uh, here it's uh, uh, If I live uh, till I'm a kindred, uh, I'll never forget it. So it's a phrase uh, actually tattooed on the skin. I don't know, maybe. Uh, but that's just a fun part. Uh, and so that you'll uh, understand that sound, like any other electromagnetic emission, sound, light, radio frequencies, it's all about electromagnetic emissions and electromagnetic emissions are waves. So that's why it's waveform and actually uh, maybe that's professional deformation or maybe something else, I hear sound I imagine a sound like a waveform. Uh, and naturally, uh, like a vinyl uh, pitches uh, or Edison's uh, wax drum. So actually, if you extract, uh, if you cut a vinyl uh, in a half of thickness, you'll find that uh, all that sounds are carved, pressure carved into uh, vinyl or wax works and uh, it looks actually like waveform so it's pretty much real now uh, maybe it's a jump maybe not but uh, I hope that uh, you heard how do you record sound how does it looks what to avoid in the field more or less it's an infinite uh, subject we can talk later uh, no problem. So, since uh, everything's gone digital in the 21st century, it's about software that makes you turn, uh, that uh, helps you to turn whatever sound into something you hear later, whatever recording. So, software matters. How good is it? How precise it is? Uh, how cheap or expensive it is? How usable? and uh, how capable. So, I'm starting with the free stuff. There is a huge elephant in that room. It's called Audacity. Open source, free, uh, but it was created not with uh, guys like me in mind, not uh, for sound engineers. It was created like uh, a lot of other stuff by software developers for software developers. Uh, actually by guys who, uh, who develop like a command line image editor where you edit your images, not actually seeing them. So anyway, uh, since it's open source and uh, anyone can uh, alter uh, it uh, to, its uh, to his or her one's understanding, to add the uh, features and to cross check others mistakes and design flaws. Uh, so this became more or less usable in recent years. 
So it's downloadable, it's cross-platform, it will work on Windows, Mac, uh, Linux, Unix, uh, even Solaris, maybe, you don't know. Uh, or you can compile it for your operating system you're, if you're capable enough. Don't think so. Uh, so Audacity is more or less simple for a common user because it is not uh, developed by sound professionals for sound professionals. It, it is developed by, well, casual sound recorders, casual users for casual users. So it's reasonably simple. It's free to download and use, and it's good. But I don't like it. Paid stuff, because paid stuff is better. Paid or, well, I won't say that word, uh, that word here in American Embassy, uh, but you'll get that idea. Uh, so paid stuff is better, regardless of who pays for that. Adobe Audition. Adobe is a notorious giant uh, from the uh, West Coast that buys what it likes and makes a Photoshop of it. So there was a company called Centrillum. Uh, it uh, developed a very nice uh, sound editor, Cool Edit Pro, or just Cool Edit. It was inexpensive and reasonably good, and uh, it could do multi-track editing. Uh, I'll tell what is that. Uh, but it was so good that Adobe couldn't stand uh, uh, and just bought it and uh, called it Audition and uh, developed. And actually, it's good because, uh, well, who said Photoshop is bad? <laughs> oh, well. So Photoshop is good. I have one of my friends, uh, he hates Photoshop and uh, any Adobe software, prefers to use uh, something mm, like maybe easier to use, but, uh, well, I'm, a, I'm an Adobe user for almost 25 years, since being a gr almost a grade schooler since 1993, when I was 11, almost, almost 12. So this is like a native environment for me. I know all that uh, uh, instruments, uh, they are nice, and uh, precision, precision is what matters when you edit uh, sound and video and actually when you edit anything. So precision matters and this thing is damn good precise. Up uh, one millisecond, it's fine, perfect. You don't need any more precision. Uh, one thousandth of a second. You can cut all the tiniest flows from your sound uh, so that your listener won't notice that. You can join, uh, split uh, and do anything you'd like. Uh, with that, and so single track and multi track. Uh, so here it's a uh, multi track part um, uh, of the interface. So a single track is uh, just I record something like one voice, one instrument, uh, one any other sound uh, in mono or stereo, one channel or two channels. It's a single track. I can, and if I cut and paste anything, uh, I just cut and paste from like one uh, piece of tape, like magnetic tape. A multi-track editor allows me to, almost literally, it was done th like that in 20th century, to place several recorders in a parallel uh, uh, assembly and uh, record or move or edit sound relatively uh, between the tracks. For example, here it's uh, something like a uh, rock band or whatever. So uh, here it's something like uh, pipe, uh, violin, and uh, maybe drum. Don't know. So, and you can adjust and master that. Uh, so if you record an orchestra, of course you can record an orchestra with one microphone directed more or less in the center of that, like a stage, or several microphones. But you'll get much, much better results, much better results, if you record each source of sound separately. Each violin, each pipe, each drum. So they have, they all should, ideally, they all should have their dedicated recording track 
on a tape, a virtual tape, and so that you can combine all that sounds in a fashion that suits uh, that you like best uh, and uh, which suits your purpose the best. Uh, so, if uh, someone misses a note uh, or starts uh, not on time or ends not on time, you can, with a multi track recorder, you can edit that easily later. Or just like it's done with a lot of live concerts, at least rock concerts and especially pop concerts, if you failed to do something during your actual live performance, you can fix it later in the studio and put specific several notes of you missed on guitar or in bass or in drums. You can uh, put that specific notes, play them in appropriate quiet conditions and like copy and paste them so that that would sound nicely. So actually all live, stay live shows uh, like huge rock concerts uh, for like, I don't know, some Iron Maiden, whatever, or maybe some other rock bands like ACDC, Beatles, whatever. Uh, so they, uh, they record each instrument separately, uh, unless it's of course a bootleg. So they record each instrument separately and then they edit and combine them later so that you'll get, uh, you'll hear instruments and uh, singers and not a roaring crowd. Which, which you would hear if you place a microphone in the center of a stadium. You'll hear a roaring crowd, and that's you don't Okay, so that was a PC software or cross-platform. Mac users don't panic. Uh, I don't like Macs. I'm, um, I'm a Windows user for more than two decades as well. But uh, still, Mac is good for sound. Had I been a musician or uh, really into sound more than I am, probably I would have a Mac. So, one thing that justifies the Mac Macintosh existence in 2017 is Logic. Logic Pro. Um, very nice sound editor. In some aspects, it's better than anything else. Better than uh, Sony SoundForge, better than uh, old Cool Edit, which you reportedly can still download and use in compatibility, compatibility mode in window, Windows. Uh, in some aspects, it's better than Adobe Audition. Maybe not at all. But yet, musicians, a lot of musicians love it. It costs some money, not a subscription like with uh, an Adobe since 2014, but if you're a Mac user, you already have more or less passable sound editors. Uh, it's Sound Recorder and GarageBand. They are not as precise. Their multi-track capability is uh, almost non-existent. Uh, there is some, something like that in GarageBand, but not, uh, not in Sound Recorder. But still, it allows you basic recording and basic or not so basic editing of what you recorded. Uh, that, cons uh, that concerns mostly podcasts. Or if you uh, actually, if you have more than one sound source, like two microphones uh, interviewing someone, so you have a microphone for yourself or, and for your interviewee, uh, and you need to combine that nicely, so uh, that's the case when you need a multi-track editor, uh, and while you can somehow survive with GarageBand on Mac, uh, or with uh, some uh, other basic sound editors on Windows or on Linux. It's a multi-track recorder and as good as Logic or Adobe Audition, that will do the job for you as it should be done. Okay, so with, okay, sorry, <coughs> I noticed that I have water. So, My impression was that GarageBand is more about like, creating music. GarageBand, yes. GarageBand, uh, it's for like simultaneous recording of several instruments, uh, preferably electric, not acoustic. Uh, it's for simultaneous recording mostly. It's for multi-track recording rather than for uh, multi-track editing. But still you can edit. And of course, you can record with uh, uh, advanced multi-track editors. 
Yes. My colleague just asked me um, if you're familiar with this software called uh, Pluralize. Is, is it something similar to Logic Pro? Uh, Pluralize. Uh, she says, like, um, if she's recorded something with different devices, camera, zoom, and mics, like how to best synchronize that. She has a problem with that. Uh, so if uh, she records with different devices like uh, uh, cameras and stuff, uh, so uh, various science sources, right? So uh, it's a problem for her. She wants to synchronize that, right? Okay. Uh, so first and foremost, there are, of course, uh, synchronization uh, automation recently that recently appeared in software like uh, logic like audition like uh, video editors uh, premiere and final cut david but that's that's where waveform helps you because regardless of uh, how did you record uh, with which kind of microphone uh, which kind of what kind of a device uh, regardless of how you did record your sound uh, if it's one sound, it looks more or less similar. The waveform uh, may be like a bit uh, wider or narrower, but you look at the waveforms. For example, if you uh, broadcast my speech right now, uh, and uh, so, uh, if my speech is recorded elsewhere, not only on camera, and I would like to synchronize it, just this clap. Uh, so the cinematic clapper, uh, one thing I forgot to bring here, uh, clapper for uh, movie making, uh, it's a thing to synchronize sound with an image or sounds between. So I clapped and camera saw that. And later, uh, if I decide to take a uh, soundtrack from elsewhere, which I won't, hopefully, uh, because uh, I hope that uh, camera won't fail. Uh, so if I decide to record the soundtrack uh, from another source, and uh, I'll get it into my editor, I'll see that clap as a tall peak, like that, on a waveform. And I align visually or automatically, visually is like, uh, manual, uh, if you do something manually, it's more reliable. Like manual settings are a friend if you know what to do. Uh, so uh, I just align it looking at the waveform. That's as simple as that in a multi track editor. So, for example, uh, if I have a, a violin recorded uh, with two microphones uh, on separate devices, like one uh, in camera, one on dedicated recorder. Uh, and uh, I wanted to to, uh, uh, to combine the sound, not to replace one sound with another, or even like that. Uh, I want to somehow combine the sound uh, or align image with uh, an, uh, with another sound uh, soundtrack. I just look at waveforms. That's as simple as that. That's why we like waveforms. Uh, did I answer? Mm -hmm. Okay. So now, loaded with all that knowledge, probably even uh, you have some gear already or uh, will buy that. I'll talk on that later. You'll st you decided to start your podcasts or, this, uh, or vlog or whatever. And uh, what happens? This. You do this. You, do, um, um, you lose your thoughts, you forget words, even in your native language, let alone non-native. English is not my native language, despite my romance uh, with it lasts for almost 30 years. Still, is not, it's not my native language, and I tend to forget words. But better keep silent, like that. Silence is easier to cut out than, um, yes. I, especially if that Emina humming and uh, whatever other uh, sound garbage and uh, vocal garbage, uh, if you don't make pauses, uh, it's much harder to make a clean cut during editing. So try not to 
uh, get parasite words into your recording. Better keep silent. Silence is gold. Radio presenter is still a separate job, and for a good reason. Uh, I have some kind of practice, and still I'm a mink, sometimes. And imagine if uh, you invite someone, uh, well, I edited uh, one, uh, one podcast uh, for, uh, uh, for, a hack packer, uh, for a hack pack members, and I cut it down like maybe I made it 20% shorter because I cut out pauses and ms. So don't be a goat, don't be a mutton. Nor your text and buffer your thoughts. So I'm talking uh, not, of course I'm talking from my hand, I'm, I have no notes other than that of this presentation, but when I compiled this, uh, this presentation, these slides, uh, I more or less imagined what I'll talk about, and so these are some kind of reminders. Think in advance, uh, especially uh, when, it concerns, uh, concer uh, when it concerns life broadcasting, like uh, live interviews or you interviewing something in the street, uh, don't be caught dumbfounded. So uh, QuickWit is a journalist friend, not only journalist, QuickWit is nice. Otherwise, your record is either terrible if you can't edit out your stuff or it's much, much shorter than you imagined. So if you want to record something and you have time to think, better write it down. Write down your thoughts, polish them, and then read like following your notes, especially if, if it's not a video, if, if it's just a plain audio, a podcast. Just read it uh, calmly and uh, with appropriate intonations, whatever. Otherwise, uh, you'll spend much more time during edit, uh, editing it, ed and uh, also you won't fit in, time, in whatever time limits you can imagine. Okay, uh, now uh, sound is important. Scientists say that uh, people get uh, the majority of information from sight, looking at something, but sound is still important. Very important. So so important that it's better to have bad, disgusting, low quality video footage with an excellent soundtrack than vice versa. No one will look at your nice super duper 4K footage with a trashy sound. Full of wind, cackling, cuffing, uh, goating, whatever. So all these, all these contraptions are, uh, that I present here for you to touch later, to ask questions about later, all these I use in my cameraman job. Electronic news gathering, news TV cameraman. So that's what I am half time now. So each, uh, each of these microphones finds its use in video production. So if I would like to film a singer, I'll give him a walk-up microphone in more or less adverse conditions. Or in studio conditions, uh, I'll give him, unless uh, he or she has it, uh, I'll give him a studio microphone which, is, uh, which works best in studio conditions. If I record someone in the field, I have shotgun. If I interview something or record some kind of monologue, uh, I use lapel wireless or wired microphone. So sound is really, really important if you film video. So since I switched to video all of a sudden, uh, I guess most of you record a lot of video with these disgusting devices called smartphones. They are disgusting because uh, people are clueless and instead of calling a dedicated cameraman, they call, they don't, they call with the phones and then use their phones to do everything else. So, white balance. 
is one thing that a lot of cell phones can do, but some can. And if you have whatever kind of camera that allows you to set white balance, it's actually how a camera perceives neutral color, white or gray. Actually, it's like gray, not white. So a candlelight is about 1800 Kelvin. Daylight is about 5500 Kelvin and uh, Himalayas up there near the, uh, Everest, it's about 1100 Kelvin. Uh, it's uh, color temperature. So it's written, what is that? What's color temperature? Is a color of an ideal black body, a uh, physical abstraction, heated up to the temperature, to set temperature measured in Kelvin degrees. So school physics again. So if I take that ideal black body and heat it up to 5500 Kelvin with whatever source of heat, maybe electricity, maybe you put it on a fire, it will have a color of a daylight. Ideal, perfect daylight. If I heat it up to 2200 degrees, it will have a color of a church candle. If I heat it up to 10,000 uh, Kelvin, it will be blue like blue LED, like blue light on the laptop or like here this, is, this thing isn't plugged. Uh, so set your color temperature appropriately, even if you can't control exp exposure. Set your color temperature appropriately. That will allow you to avoid too yellow image indoors or too blue image outdoors. So don't forget to change it from time to time. So another thing, I'm still not talking about shutter speed or shutter angle and iris and aperture and uh, some other numbers it would be good for you to know. Another thing that can salvage even an automatic shot is a composition. Composition rules were found out or formalized by ancient Greeks, if not someone earlier, but I guess ancient Greeks, and they didn't change for several millennia, nor they are obsolete. So the rule of thirds and the golden ratio, they are still pretty damn good and very, very useful. Uh, of course, you may f uh, hear an opinion uh, that, uh, okay, rules are made to break. Well, before breaking any rules, you better, you'd better know how to follow them. So when you know how to follow, you know how to break them safely. But actually, I don't think uh, until my brain clicked a lot of years ago, until uh, after my brain clicked about uh, all that stuff, I don't think that uh, I ever uh, deliberately ruined the classic composition in my pictures or videos. At least I try not to. Uh, so, again, deliberately, I don't put, I didn't put any actual images with uh, grid overlays uh, here, so that, like, boost your imagination, and so that you'd remember that three by three grid and this golden ratio spiral. That are the very, very basics. And these things are absolutely universal, not only in photography or uh, filming, but of course painting, which precedes both photography and filming, architecture, and even like uh, natural things, uh, rocks, cacti, plants, animals uh, that look like that, like are. Mm, Sorry. If you overlay a golden ratio grid or rule of thirds grid onto something naturally beautiful, you'll see that nature follows this rule, these rules too. So that's natural law, give or take. And uh, natural laws aren't good to break. 
So, and little tips that are set in any manual voiced out by almost all YouTube online tutorials in any basic textbooks. Keep your camera, whatever it is, even a phone, level and steady. Shoot in color because color is how we, most of us, see the world around us. You can always make the, your picture worse. There are, little, uh, there are little ways to improve it. Do not cut people when making portraits of them by joints. I don't know, it's not exactly a strict rule, but uh, well, if, uh, if you cut, uh, if you framed your picture so that hand, hands do not fit in, in it, don't cut, don't, uh, don't put your frame border on an elbow, on a knee, on a belt, waist, neck. That doesn't look good for people. Even if a person is ugly, uh, a properly composed shot reveals one's natural beauty. Everything's beautiful. So, if you shoot video, shoot shortcuts. Why? Uh, this presentation I'm doing here is shot from one point, uh, and uh, it's long, and it's boring, I know. Uh, and it will be very, very boring to look and to watch. Even if I replace the slides and uh, place something like running gremlins around my screen uh, later in post-processing, anyway, that will be boring. So take a note that when you're looking at something, unless you're in some catatonic state uh, or uh, under some kind of psychic attack, when you look at something, you don't hold your gaze at one point absolutely for minutes, hours, days and stuff. You change your, the direction of your look, where you look at. You look sideways every, each and every several seconds. So, uh, the, Sergei Eisenstein, a Soviet Russian movie director and uh, one of the dinosaurs and titans and creators of the whole uh, cinematography, in Russia at least. Uh, he devised a theory of cinematic editing. S it is still valid. So we don't hold our gaze at one point for too long. Why? Because we want to eat, and we don't want to be eaten, and we want to procreate. So. We watch other either for food or for enemies or for partners. That's like all basic animals. All animals like all animals do like that. They are uh, constantly alert. So m human being actually an animal is al also in alert state constantly and uh, change the direction. So. You can't, uh, you can't really fix your attention for longer than a given time. So attention span of an adult may be hours. Attention span of a kid or a toddler is several seconds. So uh, that clip conscience, uh, mosaic perception, whatever. So like video clips are done and like movies are edited. Even classic movies, there are no, almost no really long, long cuts. Angles are changed constantly. So if you film a dialogue, you show two people, then one person, then another person, then uh, again the first person from a different angle uh, and stuff and stuff and stuff. So if you want to film a 30 second dialogue, you have to do it Ideally, uh, you have to do it either with numerous cameras or in numerous takes. So that's how movies are made. So that's why filming five minutes in 12 hours is an achievement. Really good. Really, uh, it's a real achievement because 
uh, even if, uh, if you film some psychological drama without special effects, without uh, huge post-processing and editing, uh, and if you film something that requires a lot of performers' skill and passion to film, you can't usually do it from, from the first take or second or fifth or tenth. And you have to record a lot of things so they would edit all together nicely, so that lips would move, uh, uh, so that motions repeated, movements, motions, lip syncs, whatever. So filming seconds in uh, 12 hours, well, nothing special about that, even without special effects. Uh, so, shooting shortcuts, especially if you narrate later in studio conditions, will help you to keep your viewers' attention. Of course, if you shoot so-called synchron or uh, an interview a person, a talking head, of course you can uh, hold uh, that person longer in your picture, like 30 seconds, especially if a person uh, uh, like moves, uh, speaks, or looks funny, whatever. So, one, just don't let viewers' attention sleep. That's for, like, for newscasting, for journalists, for blogging, for whatever else. Keep attention, and editing helps with that. So, uh, if, you narrate about, uh, if you film about something and uh, also narrate, don't repeat everything your viewer sees. So, for example, I'm talking about microphones. I can take it, and I don't need to tell that I'm taking the microphone. I just take it, and uh, it's seen. And smartphones are vertical, and we use them vertically. But as a journalist, as a vlogger, as just a casual user who records kittens, uh, babies, uh, doggies, uh, whatever else, please, pretty please, hold your cell phone and the camera in the video mode, horizontally. Because your display, your screen, and your television on a wall are horizontal, still. And uh, actually, it's really annoying to see two-thirds of screen black. Or rotate my display, but YouTube and other video hostings, they can't enter a vertical video. They can't do that, yet, at least. So, all the rest, if you, miss if you missed your exposure, if you slightly missed your white balance, slightly, I stress it, slightly missed white balance, uh, if you missed, messed with exposure settings and your image is slightly darker or slightly brighter than it should be, slightly, again, uh, that can be fixed on post. Just don't rely on post processing too much. Uh, so the Q&A session follows, and we have more than one hour, even with a lot of people coming late, and a lot of people not coming at all. Uh, so you see a lot of stuff here on the table, and uh, don't think that I spent a lot of money on that. Uh, actually, uh, one of the purposes of this workshop is to help you save money. So, device number one, buy used. Because microphone may not look pretty and shiny, but as long as microphone records the sound and does it good, it doesn't crackle, it's a good microphone. Why should I pay premium uh, in a shop when there is a, some person out there who doesn't need the microphone anymore or uh, uh, needs uh, money uh, more than a microphone. So, okay, if you care about hygiene, well, wipe it with uh, alcohol, no problem. So, uh, if it happens in the USA, Craigslist, Craigslist. If it happens all around the world, it's eBay. If it happens in Russia, where we are, there is a monster that devoured uh, all the market, almost all the market for uh, online sales, 
second hand sales, it's avito.ru. Avito is uh, like a giant thrift store. Not exactly, not exactly a thrift, not exactly a store, but like who am, who am I explaining that to? Okay, so on Avito you can find, as well as on, Craig, as on Craigslist, you can find almost anything. A lot of new stuff, a lot of brand name stuff, a lot of fakes, a lot of cheap, but our goal is to find what's good and cheap. If you have questions about that, don't hesitate to contact me. I know, <laughs> I know what to ask for and what to look for, at least when it comes to gear. And if I need something that you're proficient at, well, I think I'll call you. So, another. Uh, uh, regardless of that, almost all uh, everything here is bought. Use something was bought new. And still, it is made in China. Chinese, uh, well, for Russian, uh, the American territory, even if it's still in Russia, to praise China may sound like something strange, but it is not. China is a world factory. It was world's factory, but now it's world's development center. Development center. Chinese do a lot of excellent stuff, especially for themselves. Also, they sometimes export it. So this thing reads that long live the great Chinese people. Long live the great people of China. Once we, uh, I, I'm not sure about pronunciation. Once we were the Dejong Orion men. Uh, so pronunciation is important in Chinese because it's a tonal language. And probably this, at least I consider, it's the explanation why Chinese microphones are mostly good. Of course, there are utter crap like this or this, uh, where it was a uh, lavalier mic microphone that costs uh, less than a piece of bread. Espe uh, like here it costs $5 in Moscow after numerous thrillers. Uh, maybe in China they are sold by weight, like uh, $1 per half, half a pound of microphones. So there are very, very crappy Chinese microphones, but still, even being crappy, they still perform their basic function. They record your voice. So my idea about why Chinese microphones become good is not only be, uh, because Chinese decided to make uh, all their goods better, they did, uh, but with tonal languages, it's intonation, meaning frequency of voice. Intonation is critical. While in our, in European, and, uh, langu in European languages, intonation means motion, like, what the hell? Uh, but the meaning of the word is almost unchanged. In Chinese, in Vietnamese, uh, in uh, some African languages, in Thai, tone, how, uh, how do you say a word, changes its meaning. So if audio equipment can't, rep uh, can't reproduce tones exactly as they sound, people in China and in uh, Asian and African countries with, uh, who, use tonal, who speak tonal languages, they just would not understand themselves at all, each other. So that's probably, tonal languages are probably one of the, the reasons uh, why Chinese microphones are really good. Of course, a lot of them are ripoffs of Japanese, American and German models, but still they're somehow redesigned and made better. This guy, Superlux, is direct descendant of this one, except that this one's wired and this one's wireless. Actually, I consider it a clone of Shure SM58. This one is PG, it's for wireless. Uh, but it's three times cheaper officially, and I've got it seven times cheaper, thanks to Avito. Three times cheaper than the original, and at least not at least as good as the original, if not better. That's why I like Chinese stuff. Of course, uh, that requires some expertise, which I'm gain, always gaining, and which I already have. That requires some expertise. I'm glad to share that. No problem. If you want to buy something, don't hesitate to call or write me. Uh, I'll help you, or at least point 
to a place where you can read something. Do you have any recommendations on where to get secondhand stuff around here? Like uh, so, first of all, secondhand, the, uh, the giant thrift store is Avito. Of course, there are forums uh, that remain from older times, uh, from uh, early 2000s. Uh, I'll, give, I'll give you that presentation. Don't worry. Uh, I'll actually, this presentation is already shared online, so if uh, long link, uh, I'll post it later uh, in a hackpack group uh, and maybe elsewhere. So, Avito is the place. Of course, there are VideoMax forum, uh, videomax.ru, and uh, some other places where you can occasionally find some stuff that uh, someone decided to sell exclusively there. But, of course, Facebook sales groups uh, like uh, Foto Barakolka Moskva, Foto Navos, uh, like that. Uh, Video Kino Barakolka, that's Russian groups, uh, for Moscow, dedicated Moscow groups. Of course, you can get there, but the thing is that even if even if uh, a message posted from Avito, uh, it exists in, on Avito as well because everyone buys at Avito, everyone sells at Avito. So Avito in Europe, it's OLX. In Slovenia, for example, it's Bolha.com. But well, you don't you don't buy all the gear in Slovenia. <laughs> you buy it in China. Oh, uh, of course. For Chinese, it's a different matter, but uh, to buy something directly from Chinese in person, you either have to go to China or to know Chinese at least, or to be, to be registered of Taobao uh, and uh, other stuff. Um, I don't encounter, I didn't ever encounter used uh, stuff from China uh, on AliExpress, but where to buy Chinese? Uh, locally, there are some shops I'll mention later. Uh, again, this is not endorsed. I'm not paid by them. Uh, so, if you want to buy from China, you buy from AliExpress, you buy from eBay as well. And uh, actually, uh, some Chinese goods are cheaper on eBay than uh, on AliExpress for some reason. Don't know. JD.com, GearBest, or uh, the recent addition to that family, umkamol.ru. Uh, I didn't test them, but they claim uh, a really speedy delivery, like uh, four or five days. Uh, no, no. Maybe that works like that. I didn't try them yet. Uh, I trust secondhand stuff. Why? Because it's already tested. Someone put, uh, someone paid premium, bought something new, uh, used it, uh, and made me sure that it works like I want. And, uh, of course, uh, you can choose stuff in any condition, like I bought my camcorder, which is far from being cheap, from Avito, uh, from a fellow cameraman, and uh, I'm really happy with that. So, if you don't have any time to wait for delivery from eBay, from uh, Avito, or, for, uh, uh, or don't uh, want to wait until some fellow from the US comes here uh, with the stuff you asked him or her to uh, buy on Craigslist locally. So there are several stores in Moscow that sell uh, audio and uh, photography related gear. Again, I'll give that presentation, uh, make them public. Don't waste your phone's memory. Uh, so the uh, two above are not exactly a big shop. They don't keep huge stock. Uh, 812 photo, as you may guess, uh, they are mostly St. Petersburg based. Uh, but they have Moscow branch uh, and uh, they sell Chinese, but not only Chinese, like Australian stuff, like Rode microphones as well, and uh, Zoom recorders. And uh, they sell Chinese. Okay, you'll pay premium, but you pay for some kind of warranty, you know, uh, for not messing with. Uh, stuff like uh, broken or defunct or uh, faulty, uh, faulty equipment. So you can come, pick it up, test, feel it, and then decide to pay or not. Of course, they do online delivery. Photosclad.ru, if it's for the warehouse, uh, it's like a nation, nationwide uh, chain. Uh, they have branches uh, in a lot of cities and towns around Russia. 
uh, they of course sell a lot of Chinese and uh, they sell the branded stuff too. Price ranges are more or less fine. Pop music are you dedicated musician and uh, audio equipment store? Uh, they have a lot of stuff, not the cheapest, not uh, Chinese, not exclusively Chinese, or and at the same time not exclusively uh, name brands. And uh, Mustorg, uh, very very old by Russian standards, uh, they exist for about 25 years or so, maybe a bit less. They sell professional gear, uh, name brand stuff. Uh, they are expensive, but there are things that uh, you can find uh, at least officially imported. If you care about if you care about that, uh, you can find it there. And of course, I don't know if there is uh, an equivalent system outside Russia and former USSR. Yandex Market, an aggregator. It's not a shop itself. Uh, it doesn't. Uh, they recently started to like uh, foolproof and guarantee your purchases, protect uh, buyer protection, customer services, and stuff. But you can uh, find where it's better. Of course, there are some uh, like. That's for the word. Uh, okay, uh, some dodgy, yes, some dodgy uh, web shops, uh, almost scammers that uh, do, don't uh, deliver orders, that don't deliver orders on time. Actually, I have no doubts ordering something from eBay or for, from AliExpress, but I have a lot of doubts always, each time, each and every time, I'm ordering something with deliver from Moscow to Moscow. I don't trust Moscow couriers, at least uh, in their coming strictly on agreed time. Well, if uh, for like I ordered something from some shop, they didn't uh, have a venue, like an uh, office, uh, so no local pickup, delivery only, and uh, I asked the uh, delivery guy to be at 3 p.m. He arrived at 1 p.m. Okay, I had just that five minutes uh, that I needed to deal with that, but if I ask uh, a delivery to be, speci uh, be to be here on specific time, well, I have a reason behind that. So uh, Moscow deliveries are not that good. So just allow a full day, or two, or three. They n don't like to keep time really good. So. Of course, I know much more, and uh, of course, uh, there are electronic markets like Savelovsky uh, 1905 Goda, that's electro uh, Presny Electronics, and uh, Electronic Heaven on Praska down there at Line 9, uh, and Tsaritsina, where you can find a lot of dodgy sellers, but some rarities and uh, thrifts, whatever. Meeting, of course, if you live in the southwest. So, Moscow is one of the cities where you can find absolutely anything, especially if you're willing to pay. So I guess later is uh, like our private talk. <laughs> so here my uh, sort of official part is over. Don't shoot the piano man. Thanks for attention. And uh, you can find me online if you didn't already. That's my universal handle, but I, uh, I'm not Mr. Donald Trump. I don't tweet. But uh, I'm, I am on Twitter, you can write me there, but uh, I don't guarantee that uh, I'll pick up your message that instant. Facebook or Telegram or WhatsApp, that's better. Uh, so if you have something to throw into my virtual hat, I'll appreciate that, but that's not necessary. Uh, so your questions, my answers. Trivia type. If you have any. Uh, okay, so, and uh, so enter multimedia journalist. 
enter modern multimedia journalists. Uh, uh, I want someone to draw that uh, poor creature who has to have six, uh, uh, six arms, uh, 12 feet, 15 ears and 25 eyes. Uh, so, uh, the whole thing, I almost, uh, when I film something uh, in a TV format, uh, I usually work with a correspondent, with a guy who can hold a microphone, who will ask questions, who writes and stuff. But the thing is that you can do all that even with one smartphone, with some stuff I'm ready and willing to show to you. So, first, tripod with a smart smartphone holder. That, that, that's, that's yes, that's smart. That's a smart smartphone holder, iPhone compatible. If you interview someone under some, in the shade of some tree, not a palm, hopefully, with a larger gorilla pod or equivalent, maybe a palm. Oh, it's restarted. Uh, press the button for too long. Actually, Chinese smartphones are quite good as well. So you touch this gorilla pod there and forget it. You don't need to, to set it like on a flat surface. Imagine it's a tree branch. So you can walk like that. Filming yourself, filming yourself. Uh, so uh, that's how you deal with uh, placing smartphone. Of course, uh, there are things like GoPro mounts uh, that allow you to put an action camera or smartphone on yourself, like on a dog and stuff. Uh, but that doesn't look really good. Uh, so. First, hold it, keep it level and steady. Tripod is the first thing. Uh, but actually, cheap tripods uh, that aren't small, they are crap. So proper tripod. Huh? Uh, so gorilla gorilla pods, they may be original by Joby now Manfrotta. Uh, they may be Chinese ripoffs, but the basic idea is the same. They may. Be, I wonder. Uh, when someone devises a uh, like full size gorilla pot to mount on baobabs, like gorilla size gorilla pot. Okay, so tripod is nice. Uh, another obvious thing I see in a lot of BBC and uh, Chinese uh, CNTG, CCTV, it's I seen guys broadcasting on Facebook Live uh, with a selfie stick with the same smartphone holder. Okay, selfie sticks are nasty, they are out of fashion. Not true hipster anymore. Yet, yet, selfie stick, apart from holding your small camera or smartphone. Actually, I bought this very selfie stick before the selfie stick mania, and I bought it as a very, very cheap alternative. Cheap and lightweight alternative to a full full-blown professional titanium microphone rod. Because this is good enough to stand on from decent distance. You can, uh, you can mount wireless transmitter here or just, set, just place any kind of wireless microphone, even a lapel microphone with levels raised. Uh, you can place it here, move your frame outside uh, move your uh, microphone outside of a shot. Uh, use some clamps to hold it, to mount it on another tripod, maybe a slightly bigger. So you set your camera on a tripod, uh, attach just a selfie stick with a lightweight shotgun microphone, and you'll get your speaker recorded, your interview, you record it uh, pretty damn good as well. Uh, you can hang a lapel microphone to a speaker. Uh, I just don't have my camera or camcorder with me right now. Uh, so a lot of uh, there are a lot of uh, 
different fixtures and uh, small stuffs that allow you to mount a lot, a lot, a lot of uh, stuff on your camera's hot shoe. So like a hot shoe rail, cold shoe rail, you have your small light, LED light, you have your wireless microphone transmitter or a shotgun microphone there and something else and maybe additional battery, whatever. So uh, let's imagine not so hypothetical situation when you're uh, out in the field only with your phone, you are not allowed to carry a camera, but you're allowed to carry some microphones. First of all, where is it? Yes. A $30, uh, $30 solution for a perfect sound, reasonably perfect, is a wired lavalier microphone designed specifically for smartphones. Uh, I don't know if you see that, I, I'm not sure if camera sees that, but uh, this is a jack specific, designed specifically for a smartphone. So this cable is reasonably long, like two meters. Uh, this thing, by the way, is called Aperture I Love Easy. That's a box from it here. It's not an endorsement. I just really like the thing. And uh, it's kind of good quality and uh, reasonably, reasonably priced. So I use it as a replacement uh, for my original uh, uh, lav mic that lost. Uh, just decided uh, it doesn't want to live anymore and stop working. So. Uh, Cheap, well, inexpensive, maybe even cheap. There are Boya stuff. Boya is even cheaper, even slightly inferior. So cheap uh, lavalier microphone attached to your smartphone uh, with any even default sound recording or camera app already makes your sound much, much better. But uh, so small tripod or a selfie stick uh, held more or less like that, pointing at your subject. So where is, where is the holder? Yes. So, so like you, point you point your smartphone camera at your subject, you have your wired or wireless lavalier microphone plugged into your smartphone, clipped onto your speaker. And actually, that doesn't look half bad. With modern smartphone cameras, why not? You have sound, you have more or less clean image, uh, especially if it's not dark outside, like in a broad daylight or uh, even uh, some rainy weather. You have picture and you have good sound. Again, good sound makes 80% of a video. So you, uh, your viewer here, your uh, subject clearly and sees more or less clear as well. So that's why if you want to Walk, again, long live Chinese engineers, uh, 3D gimbals, 3-axis gimbals. Uh, this one is for action cameras, like GoPros. This one's Chinese as well. So uh, Chinese are the pioneers in terms of 3-axis gimbals. And these uh, things, uh, they actually a quite nice replacement for a much uh, heavier, bulkier, and uh, more expensive stabilization systems. So you don't need a dedicated Steadicam uh, cameraman who studied uh, Steadicam for five years at some academy in California. Uh, you don't need to pay him uh, three times the wage of a regular cameraman. Uh, just small Chinese, brush three Chinese brushless motors, two Chinese batteries, or maybe not two. Uh, so uh, I have only a GoPro type of three axis gimbal, but there are even cheaper under 10,000 rubles uh, for people out there, out, uh, uh, that's cheaper than $150. Gimbals for smartphones specifically. They fit something iPhone size like this Xiaomi smartphone. So this thing, 
There is a gyroscope inside that uh, tracks your motion, that tracks your movement, and uh, contracts. So I can walk like that. Here, uh, the camera is uh, turned off, of course. No battery inside, no card inside. Uh, so I can walk like that. If I walk with a selfie stick or carry a tripod somehow, all, the, uh, all my steps will be transferred. Oh, Andres, <laughs> close to the end. Uh, all your steps will be uh, seen by your camera if it doesn't have any kind of own stabilization system. This thing cancels out that vibration. Any action produces a counteraction. New, one of basic physical laws. So I, uh, I promise to keep physics to minimum, but uh, still you can't uh, avoid physics completely. Oh. So this, uh, with the help of gyroscope, these motors keep things more or less in one place. So they can uh, follow your motion more or less swiftly. So uh, I don't think that there are non-Chinese gimbals because Chinese invented them, actually, and specifically this Feiyu company. Uh, so you can, like, oops, inverted mode or as well selfie mode again. Uh, so there are gimbals for uh, GoPros, for, uh, for action cameras actually, not, not necessarily GoPros themselves. Uh, so there are gimbals for uh, action cameras, for phones, for proper cameras, even for bigger camcorders. Uh, more or less the same devices are used with, uh, with uh, filming drones, like DJI Mavic or whatever else. DJI is a huge ele elephant on the drone market. Uh, and they're really good, sure. Uh, so electronic, image, uh, electronic physical stabilization combined with whatever, if there, if there is any electronic st uh, stabi or, or even optical stabilization, if you have the, the most recent iPhone or Google or something. Uh, so that makes your image smooth when you walk. So you can report live holding uh, your phone on a three axis gimbal uh, with the lavalier mic microphone attached, and no one will suspect you, except uh, some guys, uh, some people like me who have some clues about uh, how things are done. Uh, casual viewer won't suspect you that it's done just with a smartphone, cheap Chinese microphone, and uh, weird Chinese contraption uh, that cancels out motions. So uh, if you uh, are somewhere with a decent wireless coverage, and uh, uh, you have some like uh, vlog or popular YouTube page and uh, your audience into like watching lives. So like, like Martians landed. We know Martians don't exist, at least landing. But of course, uh, okay, uh, Orson Welles is happy. Uh, every, everything's happy. Everyone's happy. Uh, Martian invasion. And you walk there and you have uh, all that stuff with you actually. Uh, it comes in suitcases, but it really fits in your purse. So, uh, or backpack, whatever. So you pick it out, you, you're connected, you attach microphone onto your, yourself. There are even uh, special uh, iPhone, or not only iPhone, uh, shotgun mics and uh, XY mics that are plugged directly and they're designed specifically for specific iPhones um, or Samsungs. But I wouldn't uh, advise that because uh, iPhone becomes obsolete in a year, maybe two. So uh, I'm not an Apple fan, as you may guess. So, well, just don't buy dedicated stuff. Sometimes it's really good, but uh, mostly there are cheaper and better alternatives. So three, ax uh, three axis gimbals. That's uh, a tool for a vlogger, for a field journalist. Uh, of course, uh, the ones designed for bigger cameras like mirrorless or DSLR or smaller DSLRs or camcorders, of course, 
uh, bigger gimbals are heavy. Consider camera weight, so uh, if you have something like Sony A7 or Panasonic or Olympus or some cheaper Canon, whatever, so you, on your stretched hand, you carry both a kilogram gimbal and the camera. Of course, like uh, that wear Japanese armrests, that's actually not too weird. Uh, so, but anyway, if you want to keep it light, smartphones are already good enough. Especially the ones with, that have apps that allow you to set uh, shutter speed manually and ISO. Uh, so that way uh, you won't have like uh, sh rolling shutter, flying blades instead of propellers. Uh, that's uh, critical for me because I film a lot of propeller aviation and helicopters. So if you want to do a podcast, for example, and have nothing but a tablet, an iPad. This is again Chinese, Huawei. Uh, so, if you want to record some specific sound from a specific microphone, like uh, you, for example, a nice shotgun. By the way, this thing did cost me something like thirty-five dollars back in two thousand eleven. It's not much more expensive these days. It's just ruble became cheaper. So, this. Uh, Sandro Fernandez uh, from Hackpack, uh, he asked me about this interface. So originally it was a um, very expensive and still is an iRig device. Actually, it's uh, this box converts, uh, it's actually a cable adapter with additional battery that provides uh, power for condenser microphones. Uh, so basically what I didn't say earlier, dynamic microphones do not require power. <coughs> Condenser microphones do require power. Either uh, they are powered off a uh, built-in battery uh, that lasts reason reasonably long enough. This one is maybe four months old and that's like a crappy alkaline battery and it still works. Uh, and I often forget to switch this microphone off. So, either microphones are better powered or they require phantom power. Uh, I, frankly speaking, I don't remember uh, why phantom power is called like that. Uh, I know it's just plus 9 to plus 52 volts range, mostly plus 48 volts. So, uh, you have just you, you want to, uh, for whatever reason, you want to attach a proper microphone to your gadget. So here's, this one's cost 2,500 rubles, under $50 in Moscow. Uh, there is more advanced version, uh, which is slightly more than $100 with uh, two XLR inputs. And uh, actually, not only phantom power, but uh, dual mode plug. Because here, as you see, uh, it's probably as you see, uh, it is smartphone only plug that doesn't work with uh, regular audio devices like dedicated voice recorders. Where did I put the thing? Yes. Uh, so with dedicated voice recorders and uh, wireless microphone systems and uh, amplifiers, whatever else. So just a simple cable adapter that changes the pin out. Where is plus, where is minus, where is uh, polarity, where is signal, where is ground. Uh, so that changes the pinout. Uh, so there, uh, there they had that functionality built in the switch. So by the way, phantom power. Phantom power is required by condenser microphones and watch out for that. If a microphone needs power to work, actually it can somehow work without a power. But it's, it works better when powered. But if a microphone does not require additional power, it has its own, like this uh, wireless system or, that, uh, or a dynamic microphone, and somehow you uh, turn on plus 48 and uh, your uh, camera or your adapter or your console start to feed uh, additional voltage and uh, current uh, to 
your microphone, you just can burn it. Or at least uh, spoil down your sound, a lot of crack, cracks and uh, noise and uh, uh, misbehaving levels, whatever. Uh, so uh, watch out uh, for uh, using phantom power switches only when you need them. Uh, and uh, uh, so, uh, missed uh, thought. So, uh, with this adapter and whatever other device, you can, and maybe this setup, you can make a full blown studio anywhere. That's as simple as that. Uh, so, uh, and uh, well, if you film with a steel camera, well, steel cameras are for steels, camcorders are for videos, sign cameras are for movies, but smartphone kills it all. So, if you do a weird thing of filming a video, like a news gathering uh, with a large sensor, slow focusing, manual focusing uh, uh, steel camera. Well, actually, everything works like I described with a smartphone. You just maybe need some uh, additional grips uh, to hold it uh, on a gimbal. By the way, uh, gimbals, are, uh, gimbals are priced uh, accordingly, so the cheapest are smartphone gimbals, uh, then come uh, GoPro gimbals, and uh, uh <coughs> camera gimbals are the most expensive, up to maybe $1,000, but for $1,000 you get a brilliant piece of engineering, really. Uh, so, uh, as well, if you want to record just a general sound, but uh, better than a built-in camera microphone, whatever it is, or better than a smart smartphone microphone, so this is like, it has some, some kind of shock proofing and uh, it has a shoe mount. So it's a dedicated camera microphone, it can record actually, it can record interviews with shotguns, but uh, with the camera mounted shotguns but better spend two, three euros more, three, four, three, four dollars, so several hundred rubles for cable extension and plug it with cable. It saves batteries, saves earth ecology. So cable, nothing's more, more reliable than a good old rope. So that's our rope, we love it. So. I actually recorded some street musicians uh, on some kind of camcorder uh, with a cable extension with a cable extension attached uh, to this microphone going into my camera and using this selfie stick as a microphone jeep. Uh, so this actually requires an assistant, dedicated guy, 10 feet stuff. But uh, actually, if I had another microphone input on that camera, I could easily interview you like here, and that would be really clear. So actually, that recent uh, Putin movie by Oliver Stone, it was recorded with uh, Press Secretary Peskov standing out of the frame like that, literally. That's one of official stances for microphone road. Uh, and uh, recorded with a cardioid or directional, with directional microphone, he recorded both men talking. Uh, so, anyway, if you uh, have limited number of hands, which you do, uh, you're, you have to have some kind of shotgun microphone and some kind of uh, lavalier microphone lapel. So, either you record it, uh, either you just uh, make uh, the micro, make someone hold it uh, or hold yourself uh, if camera stands uh, elsewhere or hangs elsewhere or whatever. If you record a person-to-person -person dialogue and uh, you don't need your own voice, you need just one person's voice, one lap will resolve that and uh, actually almost regardless of uh, how did you set your levels, uh, uh, lapel microphones uh, actually are sensitive enough to hear you as well, especially if you're close. So if, uh, for example, I interview you or you interview me uh, uh, on a distance of a selfie stick uh, in more or less 
reasonably quiet, quiet conditions like this hole, well, uh, we'll have a perfect dialogue. Actually, actually, to have a perfect dialogue, since uh, lapel microphones are almost always the right exceptions, since they are omnidirectional, I uh, remind uh, you that it is here. Uh, so, since uh, omnidirectional microphones hear everything around, I can just uh, we can just place smartphone between us and the microphone will record both you and me evenly if you want to if you need to make an impression with a like professional looking microphone or your sound quality freak like I am so uh, well this this kind of adapter not necessarily ceremonic it's may it may be like iRig or whatever else or some other Chinese stuff this one's just good. So you can uh, use a microphone, uh, just holding it like that, all the classic. Uh, so if uh, that's just your, uh, if you have one device or two, because well, you always have two because you you have a smartphone. Uh, uh, that allows you to, at, le at least when, it's, uh, when it comes to breaking news, still, a camera is good, but, uh, well, in, uh, my own, in my own career, I made only maybe, yes, I'm, two or three times I made breaking news, I, and I made it to breaking news with the shots uh, on traditional camera. Because I, w I was just nearby or at the place and at the moment. I was there. Uh, Andres, if you're, if you're photographing uh, the presentation, the presentation will be uploaded and you'll get it uh, almost this instant. And uh, there is a video camera that records me. Uh, so. Uh, If you have a smartphone and some kind of attachments, like a couple of microphones, spare batteries, like this. I always have at least one on me. Always, absolutely, at all times. Now, uh, one thing I didn't cover in my presentation is uh, what to do if you're podcasting. If you want to record nice sound with your computer, you have only a computer, of course, you can uh, survive with a smartphone, especially if you're a Mac user or some like new laptop with a combined uh, jack uh, input output. Uh, so, of course, you can survive with uh, some kind of computer microphone like uh, computer headset, but that's not good. Podcasting uh, is like m mocking, mocking the proper radio, so uh, doing uh, bad content uh, with a good quality. That's, uh, that's what, uh, post uh, at least uh, initially, that what post podcasting was uh, from a standpoint of radio professionals. Uh, crappy content, uh, uh, mocking uh, radio, but radio, but not radio. So anyway, if you care about quality, you want to use good microphones because podcast is about sound and uh, if you need some, some sound to be properly recorded, you need proper microphone, especially when it comes to voice. So enter audio interfaces. So this thing here is uh, probably one of the cheapest audio interfaces ever. It's also portable, make sure it doesn't necessarily require a computer. So you can plug proper microphone, uh, it automatically detects uh, if a uh, microphone needs phantom power or not. Uh, so you plug it, uh, you plug your microphone inside, uh, into that. There are bigger models for more microphones and more inputs and outputs. You plug this into your computer, actually, uh, the, this 
presentation Mac, I can just like plug it in, uh, this thing there if it doesn't breathe the, the embassy security. And uh, well, so it doesn't need any kind of driver. It just installs it. It appears like another sound card uh, in your system. So you actually podcasting setup looks like this. So this goes to computer and this proper microphone cheap but still proper. This proper microphone plugged here we have our phone booth and so we have a perfect radio sound like that. So uh, I guess that uh, even on a camera recording, since uh, I put this lapel microphone inside that phone, phone booth, uh, the sound became slightly better. Okay. Okay. Let the announcement over. Before 900 hours. Okay, they gave us a time uh, until 7.30. Anyway, uh, it will take like 15 minutes for me to get the stuff out. Uh, so, actually, how much does this thing cost? $60, even less. Uh, it's probably the cheapest kind of audio interface. It's called Behringer Xenix. Uh, 302 USB. Uh, it's uh, it isn't mentioned uh, on my slides, but anyway, uh, there are other interfaces by Behringer, by uh, more expensive by Focusrite and more popular, and probably sounding better by Alesis, M Audio, whatever. So <coughs> cheap audio interface, cheap but still good Chinese microphone. This microphone costs. Uh, people say at gearbest.com this uh, model of microphone, no name, costs something like $13, complete with a spider shock mount. Oops. Uh, complete with a spider shock mount uh, form, but without this pop filter. Uh, but with a cable and with something else. Uh, and still for that absolutely weird money, probably my dinner tonight will cost me more than that. Actually, I paid uh, 3,000 rubles, which is more or less 50, like $52 recently, for this microphone and this phantom power adapter for a computer or for any other audio device that, that, uh, that doesn't uh, have uh, powered input like this one. Uh, so. So essentially, a microphone itself did cost me something like 1,800 rubles. Anyway, for, for any kind of microphone, it's, in, it's already inexpensive. For a studio microphone, still, this thing is called BM800, BM800. It exists under numerous brand names or lots of them in China. Any Chinese startup that decides to sell some generic stuff uh, with a bit of a premium. They invent a brand name. Sometimes they succeed. Sometimes they become a brand name like New Year, New N-E-W-E-E-R, New Year, maybe X-T-U-G-A, whatever. So the model matters. It's a generic microphone. I don't know what it is made of. I know that uh, it Here's all the, uh, everything that uh, happens when I touch uh, its small body, is shock mount, so you don't touch your microphone when you're recording. Actually, that, that is valid also for very expensive uh, uh, industry ideal standard Neumann microphones that cost like thousands of dollars or euros. So you'd better don't touch your microphone unless it's uh, designed for being touched, like, okay, this one. 
this. So this is handheld, so it's uh, the body. The body is soundproof enough uh, to uh, uh, make uh, to dampen somehow that grasping motions. So this microphone hangs uh, somewhere. You talk into it, and you know for uh, for that kind of money, it does pretty damn good job. So this thing. $60, cheaper used. This thing, $25 new, $25.30. Uh, well, combined with that uh, table pantograph stand uh, and, uh, and the pop filter, well, pop filter maybe $10, $5, $10, this thing uh, maybe $15. So $60, $25. Uh, five, 15, 60, 30. So for 100 dollars or euros, for that matter. Uh, oh yes, add 25 dollars for a phone booth. So under 150 dollars, which is actually a price of a name brand wired, not wireless like this, but wired microphone, you get a home vocal voice and vocal recording studio except that you need to have a computer, but since this thing is an uh, audio device itself, you need just uh, actually almost any, whatever, computer running Windows, like XP and older, uh, uh, and newer, sorry, XP and higher, or whatever Mac like with uh, OS X, maybe 10.3, uh, maybe 10.4, uh, that computer may cost you like $100 more, and uh, open source editing software. So for basically $250, which is the price of a microphone, you get a whole portable studio, complete with a computer. That's it. So when you buy that used, uh, when you, well, uh, know what you're buying, if you don't know, ask me. Uh, so, uh, then uh, that's it. So, anything else? About smartphone apps, which you mentioned earlier. Hmm? About smartphone apps you mentioned earlier, and, uh, particularly with post production, for example, if you're not happy with the way that sound came out or if you have a bunch of background noise. Uh, uh, so, post, post, post production on a smartphone. Well, I didn't dig into that subject matter yet. I can dig, uh, I can do some research on that if you would like to, but uh, I'm not aware that even tablets, let alone smartphones, uh, were widely used for editing mm -hmm. just because it's really damn hard to edit a waveform uh, with that precision on a touch screen that small and even on a touch screen like that. Okay, given these are Android devices, I can use Bluetooth mouse and whatever, but uh, iPad, may, well, iPad Pro with a pen, uh, probably there are some sound editors, but they are much different from a desktop ones. Uh, I don't, uh, I didn't do any research uh, on iPad sound editor specifically, because I'm not an Apple user again. But if you'd like, I can do that, and uh, you'll get my recommendation on that. But still, there are cases when uh, you'd better think in advance and just use a bit better suited gear for recording than uh, then instead of messing on post-production, especially if uh, you're in uh, time pressing conditions. Okay, so for example, this, um, if you're in a crowded place or in a loud place and you have this, you would recommend this uh, the shotgun uh, microphone, for example, then? Mm, uh, actually, for recording audio without a video, or even a video in a, like, a, like a 70s style like that, if you work in uh, if you work in loud places constantly, 
you'd better use uh, dynamic vocal microphones uh, that require uh, to be held close to your mouth. Uh, or like Sennheiser e E845. It exists wireless or wired. Uh, it's like a reporter microphone that, is, uh, that works good like that. Like uh, Russia, uh, Russia One TV, uh, Channel One, and uh, everyone else use them. Actually, w actually, any mic, any mic. If you speak close to it and adjust your levels accordingly, it will hear just you and nothing else. Maybe you'll have some background noise because uh, raging football fans, uh, like uh, the Russian team, lost in quarterfinals of uh, World Cup. Uh, that uh, that will be a very loud boo. I'm not a football fan as well, so I don't care. So uh, that, will, uh, that will be a very loud boo and just a noise. But if you talk really close to microphone and adjust your levels accordingly for your voice, not a background noise, uh, you'll have, uh, okay, uh, of course you'll have some atmosphere. Of course you'll have some atmosphere, some presence, but that presence won't interfere with your uh, information you want to bring to your uh, audience. Uh, actually, viewers, TV viewers, they don't exactly care how many microphones are in frame, uh, if there are any microphones or whatnot, uh, because, uh, well, 30 years ago people were fine watching that huge broadcast microphones mounted uh, at uh, news narrators like that, and these microphones were proudly uh, placed prominently in the center of a table, displaying maybe a channel logo in the USA or nothing in Russia and North Korea, uh, in Soviet Union then. Uh, so, and if someone is annoyed by microphone presence in a, in a shot, well, that's his sexual problems. Well, uh, if I want my sound to, to be recorded good, I don't care about how it looks. I want uh, just to, like, I want my sound clear. How I do it, it's my affair. Anything else? Uh, oh yeah, I'm uh, looking for questions. <laughs> no. No. Okay. Uh, so. Dynamic microphone, like uh, I don't know if you get if you get this Superlux Top 258 or Pro 258. Uh, uh, I wiped out all all the new old stock from Moscow, but uh, any kind of dynamic uh, microphone like Shure SM58 wired, it costs even original and new, it costs something like 120, 150 dollars, uh, or Sennheiser E845. Echo. Eight, four, five, Sennheiser. Uh, so that's uh, another industry standard uh, for a reporter, or like Sure VP sixty four AL. A shotgun, a shotgun, allows you to record clear voice in windy conditions, not loud conditions. Because, uh, for example, in, with my uh, airfield stuff, I can record it. Uh, of course, I record. Uh, in more or less uh, heavy winds, but if a helicopter lands in front of me, behind my subject, if a plane takes off or lands in front of me, behind my subject, uh, no shotgun will help. Of course, of course, if some helicopter or plane flies somewhere like half a kilometer, like a third of a mile, uh, somewhere else behind my back and I point my shotgun, my direct, uh, ultra directional shotgun microphone at my subject, either holding it like, oops, this, er, this rod is old. Uh, so uh, holding it like that, like I usually do, like at the belly level uh, or above in some conditions. Yeah, there will be some helicopter engine noise out there. So watch Flight TV, uh, English issues 9 to 13. So you'll see this thing in action, really. And, uh, quite, uh, and quite seldom you'll see it in a frame. And a lot of helicopters and noise and stuff and wind. Uh, so, 
actually, actually, for all reporter situations, you need to have an ultra-directional shotgun or switchable shotgun like this one, HTDZ. I don't know what's original, maybe audio technical, maybe something else. So a lav, uh, a variable diagram or unidirectional, ultra-directional shotgun, uh, a reporter microphone, and for really, really adverse conditions, this a vocal microphone. So a kit of four. That uh, apart, uh, except for the case you need to record a conference uh, that is uh, in a very large hall uh, at the table. In that case, uh, you'll need, I guess, uh, either dedicated conference system and plug into that. Also, by the way, always search for a line-in for, for a sound output. If there is uh, some conference hall, press center, uh, concert venue and stuff, do you have a sound output? Uh, if they do, they'll allow you to plug it in. And if you don't, you don't need to, to have all that uh, spider's nest of cables. That's why, at least I'll tell about that. So you just need to have one, maybe one, maybe two small wireless systems and uh, several cable adapters, and that's all. So uh, this uh, boundary conference microphone, that uh, it allows you to, re uh, to record round tables. Uh, for this room, if, the, if there would be one round table here, well, maybe for 30 persons, I would need like three or four of them for perfect quality. And uh, one for just something discernible. Yes, uh, and one, th uh, one subject I didn't touch, field recorders. This one is Zoom H1, the cheapest, still good. Uh, well, not exactly the cheapest itself, but uh, one of the cheapest among uh, so-called professional gear. It did cost me something like 100 something dollars. But uh, if you would like to buy a field re really all-purpose field recorder, uh, just save, save up something and get Zoom H5 or Zoom H6. They are bulkier, of course, bigger, uh, but uh, they have more XLR inputs and more imp inputs actually. Uh, they have uh, uh, replaceable microphone capsules. So uh, with one device, uh, you have several dedicated microphones, but you'll have an XY microphone like that, uh, and a figure eight microphone for uh, interview recording, uh, something omnidirectional, uh, uh, shotgun, and uh, shotgun, yes, shotgun, XY, omni, yeah, that's all. And uh, label microphone, well, uh, there are like cable label microphones like that. So good, good, good old rope still here. So uh, just in case I, I d didn't watch uh, out for my batteries and my wireless system, I always have a cable in my camera bag, camcorder. And this is like quite small and lightweight. So uh, with, uh, if you record with uh, like a consumer camcorder or, or a stills camera, which has a 3.5 millimeter input, uh, you'll be just fine with uh, something like that. A thing called Boya M1 with a six meter cable. It sounds reasonably good for the price of like $25. Mm -hmm. Yeah, here it is. So, uh, Actually, your kit is, your very, very basic kit is uh, some kind of DSLR shotgun and some kind of lapel microphone. If you don't have uh, any money at all but just uh, desperately need something, you buy it Chinese and used and wired and uh, for like 
like 1500 rubles, uh, which make like $25, you get two quite decent microphones. That's it. Which, which, in their turn, with uh, maybe one uh, small adapter, or even without it, will do great sound uh, for a smartphone and for a camera. Maybe simultaneously. Because uh, you may would like to record uh, clearer sound uh, and better picture with your camera, simultaneously broadcasting it with your smartphone on Facebook Live or YouTube Live or elsewhere on Twitch. I don't know, daily motion, whatever. So uh, two small microphones will give you just uh, decent, if not ex an excellent sound. So, I guess our time's up. Sasha? Yeah, just maybe four minutes, five minutes. Uh, four or five minutes of talking, or uh, I have uh, four minutes to unplug uh, all that and uh, drop it and run away. <laughs> All have to live by 7.30. So I guess that's a wrap. Thanks to everyone who came. Um, I don't know where are you heading, but I'm heading for some burger joint. Uh, anyone who would like and who will have uh, questions either in Russian or in English, uh, you're free to, uh, feel free to join me. Uh, just uh, give me some 10 minutes to assemble all that. Uh, thanks for listening and for uh, those uh, who didn't attend, well, you're lost. <laughs>